Hello everybody and welcome to the Shaper 3D tutorial in which I will show you an effective process in which we can design the interface like for this remote control. We will start first by looking into the sketch and why we keep the sketch rather simplistic, then do all the detailing work via direct modeling and then add everything to the remote control including, as you can see, rounded edges, etc. Because all this, then, we can bring into the visualizer, slice the surfaces, and also here I will show a very interesting process in how we project or slice the button surfaces and then add materials to it to explore finishes, design ideas, and create really nice product presentations. The geometry in raw files is going to be shared with you, so please feel free to download those. As always, these videos are filled with a lot of interesting tips and tricks. And with all that said, let's get going. So here is the starter file. As you can see, this has the basic remote control, including the sketch for the buttons. Before we continue modeling the buttons, I would like to, for a second, talk about the sketch. As you can see, the sketch is pretty simplistic. It consists mainly of basic geometrical elements, some constraints, a little bit of symmetry. And the main reason why I keep sketches this simplistic is this helps you to really focus on the layout and you don't get lost in tiny details. For example, rounding these corners. The more elements you add to a sketch, maybe the more complete a sketch might look, but also the more work and the harder it might be to adjust a sketch. And elements like, again, rounding these corners, I can much better do in direct modeling on a piece of geometry. So with all that said, let's create the buttons. I will start with selecting all those sketch profiles. I will show the outline here and then I will extrude this up by one millimeter. You see this is currently added to remote body. That's not what I want. Let's go click here and then select new body. And look at that. We have all these buttons. So these are individual objects and that's what we want. Drag this onto the first create a folder. Call this buttons. Very nice. Now here we have these four quarter pieces. We only have to work on one element because then we can copy and rotate it around. Here, again, one millimeter up, new body. And now I want this edge to be lower. This is super easy. Check this out. I select this face, select this edge, and then I can rotate it. And when I rotate it, take a look at this. It does not rotate the actual face. It is actually more tilting it up and down, which is perfect. So three degrees, that looks good. Then because I have a cylinder to center and a circle, the circle has a center point, I can double tap this, move my 3D widget onto this circle or cylinder edge that finds in the midpoint, type in 90, turn on the copy command, and there we are, 90 again. And I'm rotating 90 degree copies. Beautiful, there we are. No? Double tap, double tap, double tap, and we join this all via the union command into one piece. Since in the sketch narrative, I talked about fillets and edge roundings. So here, I will go ahead. I will select all these vertical edges and then I can now much better in 3D view explore. Do we chamfer it? Do we round it? To what degree? Eight, five, six, four, smaller, bigger fillets. I think you can get the idea pretty well. This looks good. 
we can select these sharper edges here and also round this with a much bigger, much bigger fillet than I will here select all those upper edges and we will give this a small 0 0.25 fillet. Very good. I kept these four buttons untouched because we will modify those a little bit more. Very good. Now you see, this is not complicated. Now, here I would like at the center a depression to take place. Here I would like to put a small dome on top. So how can we do this? I will go to the front view and then I turn on section view. You might have to turn off any selection. And there we are. So because I modeled everything nicely symmetrical, I can draw along the z-axis or I can check this out, draw a line down and you see how then it can snap to sketch geometry elements. It projects basically the points where the geometry intersects with the sketch into the sketch. The reason why I created this line is, look, I have a center line there, which I can draw down, 0 0.5, so half a millimeter, vertical. I would like to round this edge, and here now I would like to have a nice curve to go down. We can select the spline control point, and then from here, click and select. For those who are not familiar, I would like this spline to be tangent to the point here. So this spline selected to this line tangent. That's the reason why I created this line. Very good. And here and here, these two points, we will round 0 0.25. I would like to have half a millimeter distance in between. So we make sure this has a distance of one. Very good. Okay, so now we can do the next step. I will hide all this. I can select this and this uh, and do a revolve. Show my buttons again. And then from this, I would like this revolve object to be subtracted. Keep none, done. Look at that, beautiful, no? Yeah, you and you. 0.25. The radius here or the fillet looks smaller. It is actually really 0.25 um, to make this visually more uniform, then we can adjust it. So I went to a top view and play with the value till the left and the right starts to look even like this. Very good. So now we can go to the next one here. So I start drawing a line. There now I see the snapping points of the geometry. Here is now my midpoint. And you see same process, 0.25. Um, this line is horizontal. And now we will do kind of like the same, but from the far left corner, we start the CV curve. Tangent, we can specify how quickly this domes or not. This looks good. Select the sketch profile, the revolve axis, revolve, double tap and double tap and union. And round that fillet, sorry. Fill it that edge, I mean. The sketch we can now select and keep or remove. We don't need this anymore. Very good. Now this is a really nice detail. You can see normal button and uh, curved, you know, like a concave button, a normal button, and then this is a convex button. Here and here, I would like the surface to be treated differently. There I would like to have a gap. And here I would like to have a nice soft transition. So the easiest way here to start is 
we can select this face with a finger double tap and here I will draw a line down. I will turn off the buttons. You notice that by drawing from this edge, it projected the selectable edge of the button into my sketch. Also here, 0.5, horizontal vertical. And I do something a little bit irregular here on purpose because check this out, equal, equal 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 these two lines and just go to there and then these two lines I make horizontal and look how beautiful the symmetry works so we can specify this as half a millimeter and we specify this as one millimeter of a gap no? super good then I will select these two profiles and make a cut through the sketch we don't need anymore we can remove it very good so in here we want now along this line rather to have a, a nice soft uh, reduction of material so i select this face with a finger double tap from the left side i draw a line and this line i will make horizontal vertical and from the right side the same Horizontal, so the line doesn't move anymore because I removed the center and I removed this. Now I can do the following. So with the control point spline, press, center, press, and stop. U to U, tangent, U to U. Um, let me let me move this point on purpose away so you see what this tangent constraint does. Suck there. We move the position of this point so that this spline now flows perfectly into this line. The only thing left to figure out is this center point. I move this away a little bit on purpose. So two and two, so I standardize this, very good. I can draw here a line if I want to. Uh, a line down, 0.5, there. And here is a trick. Now you see when I move this to there, hmm, that doesn't really, I want this, that doesn't really work. I want the spline to run through this point. What can I do here? Here's a little trick. You see how I removed the, the um, distance or length constraint and I will now snap it onto that spline. Might have to remove the horizontal constraint so I can move this more freely and look at this. You see how moving this point moves actually the spline. Very good. So U, vertical, 0.5, there we are. So now we have a nice, beautiful, symmetrical piece. Uh, an alternative to how this was sketched also from the beginning, if you kind of like know what you want, here you see I have essentially the same layout. Click, click right onto that line, click, click right onto the line there. Because these points are on these lines, I do not need to have a tangent constraint. This and this is tangent. So it does it automatically for me. And then here I will do the same, uh, snap the line onto there and then specify this line to be 0.5. And you will see how this moves then this point. And here I will set up the distance for all this there. Beautiful. So with this done, then I can select these two profiles of the sketch, extrude and cut through it. Very nice. And remove this, give this a fillet 0.25. Oh, this is getting close, but this is good. 
Here we can do the same, 0.25. And then U and U, we pre-round these two edges. So when I then select this edge, I can give this another small fillet there. Wonderful. We make this one, ah, this is probably too small. So we can make this uh, maybe bigger. Oh, I see why. Okay, good. Yeah. Sometimes um, based on how complex, oh, no, I understand. Uh, point one. There, I typed in one. That was my mistake. That's okay. This happened because it shows showed you how quickly you can adjust fillets. And in case something doesn't work, maybe what way we can use to undo and readjust them. There. Point two, yeah, no, not two point zero. Very good. That's kind of like the power of direct modeling. So the modeling part of the buttons are nearly done. Now we can, however, talk about the fitting. You see in this design how I have a small fill it along these edges. And this basically is there so you can see where there are two parts meeting each other. Also here I have nice fillets on the corners and also maybe a little bit too big, but the fillet is more there to explain what is happening. Um, can't zoom in too much. There. This fillet basically helps when we move around. You can see that there's a separation between this body and this body. And we don't have this here. So what can we do? Let me show you. I will hide the remote main body, select all these lower faces. And all this we will push down by one millimeter. Okay, then show the remote control, remote body, then select the folder with the buttons and we say subtract. In this case, keep the removed bodies. We don't want them to lost. No? Uh, one more time. And there we are. Beautiful. Okay. So in a presentation now you can very easily talk with the client about what goes into these cavities. Well, it's very easy also for prototyping, 3D printing. This is really nice. And what we can further do now is, as you can see, I selected all these needed edges and then give this a small fillet. And then when we look around, wow, look at this. This is beautiful. This really looks realistic. There's a little bit of a separation between this and this face. That's the way how it would be in real life. If we would like to go one step further, just to show you, we could select this and say one, uh, 8.1. This is four. So here we will go 4.1 and the same here. So if I show the buttons now, there you can see there's even now really a gap between there. So that works really good. Shall this be something you would like to do or do you come across such a situation? I would like to show you something in addition here. So if I change the radius, 
so 4.1 the radius changed but these um, lines did not necessarily work they did not really adjust as I wanted to so these bases here I select there and which direction is this so this is negative so negative 0.1 there now we can see there's a beautiful gap there too now to bring this to an end here this is 8 and this is 8 so 8.1 and 10.1 Yeah, beautiful. As a tip again, the filleting is very time consuming. Um, and the more complex a fillet idea can get, the more complex later it can be to adjust the geometry. Always, I would suggest follow this idea of a fillet as long as it's not needed. You don't do this yet we only add fillets at the end of a design because then when we add them yes we i think can agree models really start to look nice and realistic before we continue i would like for one moment to pause and talk about why i would suggest creating the sketches for interface elements actually in shaper and not an external program and the main reason for that is First, I can project from Shaper models edges into the sketch. So I can use this as a reference. For example, you can see here with this button, this is what I projected in. And secondly, I also have access to the beautiful constraints um, to help me design and style my interface elements with a power traditional illustration programs actually don't really have and actually a third reason is the sketch will be nice and clean so the geometry the sketch will create will be flawless okay so with all that said let's take a look at what we have here now so here is the sketch with all the buttons in it let's hide this for the moment and i'm going to show you how I would propose the process of creating such a sketch from scratch. We will do one element and then we will go back to the existing sketch and we'll continue from there. So all these buttons more or less have a flat surface. That means since this is parallel to it, I will from this face create myself a construction plane. I move this up quite a lot so it does not um, overlap with the button text sketch. Good. So this one then I will scale down a lot. Now I can select any face, no matter flat or curved, which I would like to project into the, a sketch on this plane. So you see I selected that construction plane. Then on the left side in the tool prediction, we see project, click on it. And there you see all the elements. Click done, and there we are, you see? So here, there we would like to add an element inside. Select the sketch, double tap. This plane now we can remove, we don't really need it anymore. And here you see it. So this is an, uh, an edge of the fillet. I can lock the center point. I can make this a little bit smaller, for example, or I can do this directly with an offset. So let's say wherever this element is, one millimeter of a distance from here to here. Now you see, and then further insight, now we can start developing everything. Let's say we do a very simple piece, another circle, 
there we are. And this has a radius of 5.6. And then this we will do 5.1. Very good. No? And then this, so these two lines, when I select this face, I can project down as an edge. So imprinting into the body. And this is then basically how you can select a sketch and project it onto your surface and slice it. In the visualizer, then what I will show you is we can select these segments and then add materials to it. But before we do this, I would like to go back to the existing sketch and show you a little bit more of how I designed everything. Very often I say, keep the sketches nice and simple and try to solve the rest with geometry modeling. Also here you see the sketches are really simplistic, linear lines most of the time. Here, for example, I have a center um, point. The rest then is we're using symmetry and the equal constraint. Here, these are nearly tangent to each other if I would like to do this. Now I can select this and select this and then say uh, tangent and then we will do the same with there and there and tangent. This is basically what I meant with earlier when I said we have so many illustration tools here in this program. You don't really have in illustration programs which is why it makes so much more sense doing this type of work right in Shaper. So how do we continue? So check this out. I can select this and bring this down. And I move this object just a little bit above it. The main reason is I don't really know if I like this button yet. So before I really start slicing the face, I can position a geometry piece in it. Thanks to the beautiful modeling capabilities, I can also, since this is a symmetrical object, simply mirror this over there. Perfect. No? And if I like this, then I can select these two faces, select these two faces and then say, project. I might have to adjust what is what. So the right side is correct. No, the left side is correct. So the blue face will be used to slice the magenta face. These I do not need anymore. There, they're gone. No? Here, this will be really interesting too. And another good showcase why doing this interface design here in Shaper really makes sense. So I bring this down, okay. No, no, it's not too bad. But maybe the simplistic design, I don't know if I really like it. Because this is an object, I can also move this around freely and make studies. Do I like it where they are? What about making the geometry look a little bit nicer? Okay, let's give this a try. So there, we round this edge and then this interior edge this interior edge, this and this. Ray round two. Okay. No? There. And then you you on these three faces. Project. And there we are. You see, this is really, really easy. Now here, no, I mean, this is so easy. I mean, I could, for example, project this one down. But again, what I would like to point out is now I'm really stuck to projecting just the geometry. I don't have the ability to round edges. If that is something I would like to do, then I would have to do this in the sketch, but that makes the sketch more complicated. Or 
I can simply do this via a little bit of 3D modeling and then figure out that, oh, this piece should better be more centered like this. Yeah, this looks actually more the way how it should. And give this a little bit of fun, these edges way around. And then we project and slice. No? Super easy. The house is also quite fun. Another very good showcase why this type of modeling really works well. So we will select this edge, 0.5. Then we can select these two edges, 0.5. This is good too. And these inner edges here, 0.5 or 0.25, we can see. Yeah, nice. I would like to have an offset. Now, because I 3D modeled the edges nicely around it, I can shell this house. Can give this also a specific thickness, five millimeter. What's the distance I have here? So this is around one millimeter. So this is actually maybe a tick too small. Okay, then let's try and see how will this work with one millimeter. This is too too big. So 0 0.6, point, yeah, 0 0.6 looks really good. And do a project there. And then we can delete this. When this is also a flat face, this is then very easy to do. If we don't like the position, we can very easily via the move command actually edge, still adjust this. We can even rotate this as needed. No? So there's a little bit of flexibility left. Here, there is the speaker. The speaker is another fun element. So I bring this one down. With the speaker here, I will only round these vertical edges. 0.5, shell this, point, I will go with 0.6, so this is the same as the home button, and project, delete, very good, yeah, there. If we have created edges we don't need, like these two, we can select them and delete them. And we have then the original face back. Perfect. So now we are ready to add some materials to it. So let's start the visualization tool. I can select all pieces there and there and there, and then say change. And this should be glossy or a matte material. I would like this to be a matte silicon material. Very good. So this is kind of like one material applied to all. This interface element here, this will be a glossy. So I will drag a glossy material onto this body and then I can adjust the color something dark, not pitch black, that doesn't exist, but kind of dark. The remote control is also maybe way too bright gray. I can simply adjust now the used material. And with that, as you can see, colorize all parts that use this material. If I zoom in, I can see there's a structure. If I would like to change the structure scale, I can edit the the material and adjust the scale for it. See, very easy. This piece I selected, I would like this to look maybe like a metallic. Um, so we can simulate this with a rough aluminum. Also here, the size maybe is too big for the bump mapping structure there. Beautiful. 
I also have in the environment selected this as a gradient. Now we can go with system default, kind of like a gray or transparent. The gradient really makes this look nice and kind of like tacky. So how do we do the buttons? Yeah, <laughs> where are the buttons? Well, here they are. You see there I'm selecting the individual faces and check this out. We can just change the color of these faces I have. Then I click done and look, upper right corner, you see now a new copy of this material. So now I just only need to figure out where are the pieces and then say change and select this new material I created. This goes pretty fast as you see. Yeah, there we are. Also here again with the white material, this is just one color. If we would like to give this various colors or explorations, we can do this very easily by adding a different color to the material that then adjusts all the geometry pieces that use that material. We can capture a view and go back to white, capture a view, upper left corner, maybe create some really nice looking views. We have the top view, front, now with the gradient in the background. We can zoom into interesting details, pay attention to the material, or here now there you can see these mating lines, how beautiful they work. This is really good. That's kind of like why I did actually these mating lines. So they show up inside the visu. And also the rounded edges, they're beautiful. They work perfect. If we go to a front view, this is kind of like when the remote control really starts to look pretty cool there. You can go to parents and also play with the perspective. So maybe more an orthographic look. Now you see the front is really big now. So it draws more attention to that. Or if we go to a strong perspective, then it stretches a little bit more. Go to capture. Yeah. And that's it. This is how then you can use the Viso tool together with sliced faces um, on a design. And then through very simplistic material exploration, glossy material, rough material, silicone material, and different colors, style a product like this remote control. And that's it.